The business motherfucker. The Daily Read. Your source for news, politics, sports, and all things trending. Here's your host, Marcus Gentry. Hunter Biden, the president's son, will be a target for investigations. And that means data from a laptop reported to belong to Biden could be crucial to the investigatory process. CBS News has obtained its data not through a third party or political operative, but directly from the source who told us they provided it to the FBI under subpoena. And we commissioned an independent forensic review to determine its authenticity. Senior investigative correspondent Catherine Harris joins us now with what we found. Catherine, I'm very interested. Good morning. Good morning, Tony. These House Republican investigations are coming, and that could be a challenge for the White House as we head into 2023 and 2024. The laptop data we had analyzed showed no evidence it was faked or tampered with. Digital forensic investigator Mark Lanterman was previously a member of a Secret Service Electronic Crimes Task Force. There was one thing that got my attention, and that was a voicemail. It's dad, I called to tell you I love you. I love you more than the whole world, pal. Can I get some help? That voicemail, apparently from Joe Biden during his son Hunter's drug addiction, is one of many findings Lanterman used to authenticate what is believed to be Hunter Biden's laptop data. Welcome to the Daily Read, and I am your host, Marcus Gentry. Today we're going to try to get through this uh, program because I'm kind of sick. This pollen out here out west is something different than uh, east of the Mississippi, and I'm not used to this. I'm, I don't think I ever had an allergic reaction to pollen before in my life, but we're going to try to make it through this show without me coughing. If I do, I'll, I'll uh, try to edit it out. But anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about the destruction of the Republican Party. I always tell people they don't believe me. I see patterns in things. And a long time ago, when I first started being interested in politics, I read up on the Whig Party, the Federalist Party, and the Democrat Republican Party. A lot of people don't realize that the Democrats and the Republicans used to be one party. And after they destroyed the Whig Party, they basically decided to push out any other parties that tried to emerge in America. So they separated and basically became two sides of the same coin. But now, I'm starting to see with this, uh, not just Hunter Biden, but with the whole Trump thing over the last few years, that the Republican Party is, is going down that road of extinction. Now, that's not saying that they're just going to fade away immediately. It's going to slowly erode to where there won't be a party left. You see, the whole Hunter Biden thing is them reaching. The only thing that was really found on that laptop from, from what I've looked up was him naked, a couple of dick pics, him snorting cocaine, and basically, you know, some financial transactions and uh, credit card, debit card information. Normally, people put that on their internet when they're trying to buy something off all online. Normal stuff. And he probably was sending those dick pics to a female and believe me if she was underage they would have been said something about it so more than likely she was a grown woman whoever she sent those pictures to but that's all that was on that uh, laptop they was basically trying to embarrass Joe Biden and get a win for Donald Trump but it didn't work nobody cared about the laptop the Republican Party is going down in flames once Donald Trump gets indicted once Donald Trump gets indicted and they put him in jail, it's going to cause a lot of people to flee. 
this and it is. And we went to Minneapolis for an independent analysis. Were you paid by CBS or anyone else to analyze the data? No. No. I wouldn't want anyone to think that someone bought our opinion. Around the corner, it'll lead you to what we call our imaging room. Lanterman and his son, Sean, both digital forensic experts, recovered images of credit cards, a driver's license, social security number. Just the sheer volume mm -hmm. of what we're dealing with, it would be difficult, uh, if not impossible, to fabricate. And explained how files built up over years. It accumulated over time, which is consistent with normal, everyday use of a computer. There's some reporting about folders being added. We have read these um, articles. We don't see that. So I believe that that's because we have a more pristine copy. What he means by pristine people, what he's trying to say is the copy they have is the original. And whoever got a hold of that laptop and the hard drive added some stuff on there to make uh, Hunter Biden look bad so they can make the president look bad. But the Republican Party is going down in flames. And you even got people like uh, Condoleezza Rice and... and, and uh, all of Bush's old people, they in shock. They haven't been saying nothing, but a lot of the ones that's been on television, and you know, I try to check out the news every day I can, and a lot of them that be on television, some of them are fleeing. They're going independent. And just like the Whig Party, how the Whig Party got destroyed, by the Democrat Republican Party, I see that happening with the Republican Party. It's going to be a slow burn. It's going to be a slow burn because you still have people holding on to their bigotry and they're not going to let it go. But, you know, United States is not on that as a whole. As a whole, the United States is not on that. But you have people put in power, like the dissenters of the country, that's full of bigotry. And I did a show about two years ago about how if Abraham Lincoln would have executed all of those soldiers, he would have been looked at as a villain. But a lot of the things that America has been through over the last hundred years since the Civil War, we would not have went through it. If he literally hung these people from trees, all the lieutenants, the sergeants, the captains, the people in Congress, they, you know, they had their own Congress down there in uh, uh, the southern states. They had their own president. If he would have hung these people, put them on trial, even if he didn't hang them, if he would have put them in prison for the rest of their life, we probably wouldn't be in the situation we in today. But what he did was he pardoned these people. They had to turn in their guns. And then they had to go back home as losers of a civil war. Now, this is what happened. When they got back home to the South, people looked at them as heroes, even though they lost the war. These men and women got statues that we trying to tear down today, built in their honor. So the paperwork that they signed stated that since you was a, a insurrectionist against the United States government, you can no longer be a part of politics but that doesn't mean you're not dead so what that means is you're still able to produce kids so they couldn't get into politics but they train their kids and push their kids into politics and then their kids kids went into politics and now all of a sudden you have a republican party that's dotted with I mean, some of these people are ridiculous.
and, and, and Donald Trump brought it out of them. And his family wasn't even around during the Civil War. Donald Trump is a second second generation immigrant. But when we get back, we're going to talk about the next sign that I've seen uh, when it comes down to the destruction of the Republican Party. We'll be back. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. The business motherfucker. The Daily Read. Let's talk about President Biden. He's not my president. <laughs> Explain that to me. He's he's not. He, he's illegal. Um, it's uh, shadow government. He's not my president. Debating Trump supporting election deniers is impossible because of stuff like this. So what's the shadow government and how is is he not your president because he wasn't legally elected or because you didn't want him to be president? He wasn't legally elected. How did he get elected? He didn't. Right. Biden can't be president because he's not. And for anyone who wants to question that logic, read my lips. Shadow government. Checkmate. But it gets better because he wasn't elected, according to her. He was selected, which is different somehow. He got selected. Who did the selecting? The swamp. Sure. My vote was stolen. When I went to sleep that evening at 1.32 o'clock, I knew who that president was when I was going to wake up. That's not what happened. My vote was stolen. For a group of people who so glorify doing their own research, Trump supporters sure have a hard time elaborating on the evidence they've so diligently uncovered. People have got to wise up and they need to do their research. And they need to understand that the, the truth, the real truth is out there. I love seeing those videos because it, it shows you the real, uh, the real Southern, and not all of these people are Southerners, but it shows you the southern influence of yesteryear with these uh confederates i still call them confederates you see uh, you know i talked about this before how jfk he switched things around when john f kennedy started inviting minorities into the democrat party a lot of the uh the bigots they fled they didn't have a home. The only person that didn't flee was uh, Bird. Everybody know about Bird. Bird was one of the racist Democrats. You get it, but but Bird said he said he wasn't finna get chased out the Democratic Party for nobody, even if a lot of blacks come into the Republic the Democrat Party. But Bird was an exception. He stayed. But Ronald Reagan came along and opened his campaign in Mississippi and all of those Dixie Democrats he invited them into the Republican Party so over time these people have infected the Republican Party instead of them just finding their own party they've infected the Republican Party so bad that it's no longer the same party it used to be Check this out. Special counsel John Durham's report is out. Durham was hired by Attorney General Bill Barr to examine the origins and conduct of the investigation into whether former President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign colluded with Russia. He lost the only two prosecutions that he brought to court, John Durham did. But now his report, which again was just released a moment ago, appears to be an appeal to the court of public opinion. You heard what she said public opinion means nothing the law is the law and he didn't find anything because there was nothing Donald Trump went to Russia for a reason Russia is like the last bastion of white people Russia doesn't allow there's been a few blacks in Russia Africans that go to Russia for uh, business purposes that might have kids in Russia 
but those half Russian, half black kids gets nothing. They're nobodies. I saw a documentary about uh, black Russians. I saw a documentary about black Chinese people. You know, the, the mixed, the mixed race, black Vietnamese people, how black soldiers go over there during times of war and have sex with some of these foreign women that have babies by them. And then they get up after the war ends and go back home to their real wife and kids and leave them kids over there. And some of these people never really reunite with their fathers. So, China, of course, them Asiatic people, but Russia are mostly white people. And the reason why Donald Trump and some of his ilk like Russia so much, because Russia is like one of the last bastions of white people on this planet. France, England, even Ireland, Germany. My mother went to Germany. She said they love black people over there. It's blacks mixed in just like in America in almost every country you go to except for Russia. And this is the reason why there's this this love for Russia by uh, Donald Trump and his people. Let's go further into this. Joining me is NBC News correspondent Ken Delaney and our, our justice correspondent and also our legal analyst Barbara McQuaid. So, Ken, um, this was just released a moment ago. It was highly anticipated. What did we learn from it? We're still trying to determine exactly what's new in here, Katie, as we go through this 300 page exhaustive report. But what John Dur the argument that John Durham is making here is an argument that he's made before, which is essentially that he doesn't believe the FBI had the proper predication, was fully justified in opening that counterintelligence investigation, codenamed Crossfire Hurricane, back in 2016 into the Trump campaign. Basically, he reaching to. You see, the Republicans, they know that our society has moved on to the point where the little tricks that they used to do back in the 80s with Reagan, even in the 90s with Bill Clinton, that shit don't work anymore. It's dead. There's a few hundred, hundreds of thousands of people that still is with the bullshit. And that's not enough to win Donald Trump the election. Donald Trump might get a few minorities especially the Hispanics even though he don't like them let me tell you why you have minorities out here who don't want to have the status quo uh, shaken up because the status quo has made them wealthy has given them power so with this new society that's coming into effect when it comes to the modern Democrat Party with the uh, with the gang of four, the young ladies uh, in Congress with, with Rosario uh, Cortez and them, this is the new face of our society, a mixed race of people, and yes, bigotry has changed, it's, it's, bigotry has changed to colorism, not necessarily racism, colorism where, you know, uh, the lighter skinned people or the people with money they move like white people that's more of what's going on in America but the real true bigots they still holding on they ain't, they ain't went nowhere but at the same time they kids are starting to date black people and Hispanic people and they can't stop it they can't stop it so the Republican Party is going down in flames. And uh, the last segment of this show, I'm going to show you how the Federalist Society or the Federalist Party and the Whig Party got destroyed by the Democrat Republican Party because of bigotry. It was already starting back then. And I didn't realize how intelligent uh, George Washington was. I have a lot of minorities who who 
would look bad on me for saying that because he was a slave owner but the man the man was very intelligent highly intelligent he could see he could see the patterns and he knew this was trouble let's get to this last part about this Durham investigation he says that the FBI acted hastily and on uncorroborated raw information and he says that the, there was other information, for example, about the Hillary Clinton campaign involving a foreign government that wanted to try to influence them that the FBI didn't react to in similar ways. Now, what's one of the most important things to know about this report is that it is directly contradicted by a 2019 report by the Justice Department's Inspector General, which also looked into all these events and interviewed a lot of these people and concluded that the FBI was justified in opening that investigation and also that those decisions were free of any political bias. Those two events, the laptop, uh, we can go farther back, uh, Obama's birth certificate, uh, he was actually born here in America. John McCain wasn't even born here in America. Nobody even made a big deal about that. John McCain was born uh, near the Guatemala Canal. I think his father was in the military, a Navy soldier. And you know, just the just the the sheer audacity of these people to reach like that. And you know, like I said, I tell people all the time: just watch them, watch the patterns. It's there, even when you're talking. Watch the patterns. You know, it's easy. Some people don't think it's easy, but it's easy. I give it 10 years. I give it 10 years, maybe 15 at the most. But once this last little, uh, uh, this last little breed of people, because Donald Trump is in his 70s, and a lot of his people, like those people you saw on that video clip that I showed earlier these people is in their 50s, 60s and 70s they on their way out the door <coughs> excuse me this is like their last little hurrah before their kids who grew up in public schools playing football with black people hanging out maybe uh, dating black people or Mexican people this is like their last hurrah before they party goes into the dust being of history we're gonna get further into the uh, Federalist Society and the Whig Party when this uh, commercial break is over the business motherfucker the daily read <laughs> The Daily Read. Well, we're back with The Daily Read and I am your host, Marcus Gentry. For those of you who haven't, uh, who just not tuning in to my show, as uh, I tell people all the time, the reason you don't see me on camera is because uh, uh, my living conditions right now, I'm living inside my truck. And uh, you know, I don't want I don't want people to see my inside of my truck. I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. But you know, starting a business is hard. And a lot of people ask me, you know, how how you man how you maintain, you know, you you trying to start a business and keep your show going, and it's simple. You know, when when your kids are the most valuable thing that you can produce on this planet that's your generations that comes after you and even though I'm tough on mine I want them to be out here with something when I'm gone that's why I don't I don't baby them but you know I lost my I lost my house and I downgraded to an apartment trying to start my business after I downgraded from my apartment 
to an apartment, it still wasn't enough to start my business. So I downgraded again to being homeless. I had a job. I was sleeping in the back of my car. I put everything in storage. Okay? And even though it was tough, people got to realize something about me. And I know they're listening. Remember I told you guys in another show that uh, somebody put some bugs inside of my truck. That means they violated by breaking in my truck to put these bugs in my truck. But people got to understand that the worst thing you can do to a man or a woman, especially if they have custody of their kids, is take their kids. When I had my kids taken from me for four years, that was the worst thing in the world. It felt like somebody took an ice cream scoop and scooped my heart out my chest. And I walked around like a zombie for four or five years. Okay? When people see me smiling, joking, talking crazy, don't get it twisted. I'm watchful. I'm watching. And I'm, I'm aware. I'm blessed though. Got my kids back. Got them out of high school. Got them on their way in life. But there's nothing, nothing in this world that can destroy me when that's already been done. And I don't think people get that. But let's talk about this, uh, this wig party. First, we're going to talk about the Federalist Party. Party is a group of people with similar political goals and opinions. In general, political parties emerge when two or more groups of people have opposing views of government and both want to gain power. To understand why the first two political parties were founded in the United States, we need to go all the way back to Washington's presidency. When he became president, Washington made sure to fill his cabinet with people who had different opinions so he could make more informed decisions as president. The two most outspoken members of Washington's cabinet were Thomas Jefferson, his Secretary of State, and Alexander Hamilton, his Secretary of the Treasury. Now, I said earlier that George Washington, America was formed at the right time. Like, the right man, the right time, everything fell into place. Like I said, he was a bigot. He believed that black people were less human than whites, all of that. I'm not disagreeing with none of that. So this for my black uh, uh, Afrocentric people out there who might criticize me for saying the man was a genius. He knew. He knew the stuff that we was going that we going through right now today. This is what was going to happen. Let's get further into this. Jefferson and Hamilton disagreed on almost everything and their debates became the foundation for the first two political parties' ideologies. Washington warned that political parties agitates the community with ill-founded jealousies and false alarms, kindles the animosity of one part against another, ferments occasional riots and insurrection. You heard what he said. This is a man who lived 280-some years ago. And he was here at the founding of this country. I think was 366 years this country been here, 360 years, something like that. And he was around, and he had the foresight to see everything that happened with the January 6 resurrection uh, uh, riots. He saw it, but. What I'm seeing is the destruction of a political party in this country. And later on, at the end of the show, I'm going to tell you what's trying to be recycled back into our mainstream society. And I'm going to give a warning to the black people out here who want to find a different party than the Republicans or the Democrats understand that 
the Whig Party because you're going to start hearing about the Whig Party. They slowly been picking up steam. I've been hearing words about them. And you're going to start hearing about the Whig Party, the Whig Party, the Whig Party. They have a lot of black military soldiers that done got themselves involved with the Whig Party. I think it's something like 20, the man said 26,000 of them in America. And when the when the Republican Party gets destroyed, just like when just like when JFK invited all the minorities into the Democrat Party, okay, and all of those bigots started fleeing the Democrat Party, and just like Ronald Reagan went down to Mississippi to open up his presidential campaign and invited all of those bigots into the Republican Party what's going to happen is this is this this is this is what this is what you minorities because I hear a lot of blacks always say man the Democrats just as racist as the Republicans man listen right now we minorities have taken over the Democrat Party period We've taken that shit over. And for those that can't see that, it's something wrong with them. The bigots have taken over the Republican Party. And the Republican Party is about to go down in flames. But there's going to be something new. But it's not new. It's recycled. That's going to rise up, which is the Whig Party. And they was already destroyed because they couldn't get their act together. Half of them wanted to keep slaves. The the Whig Party in the North, you know, they was about big business. So when these bigots get destroyed in the Republican Party, you can trust and believe the upper echelon of the Whig Party is going to invite these people in so if you're a minority out there and you run across my show and you hear me say this keep your eyes open if you're a part of the wig party because I know a lot of minorities out here are trying to find an alternative to the Democrats keep your eyes open because them bigots are going to go somewhere they're not just going to run around here partyless our culture is a gang culture. I'm going to say that again for those of y'all in the cheap seats. Our culture in America is a gang culture. Whites and blacks. Politics, street gangs, red and blue, left hat uh, bent to the left, hat bent to the right, uh, Republican, Democrat. You know, our society has been boiled down into tribalism and it's gotten so bad to even the white people they don't see it like that but they out here gang banging too they've they've broken off into you know policies that they wanted in the early 2000s now that the democrats want to do it they don't want to do it no more. That's how serious it done got with these people. But let's continue on about the Federalist Society. It opens the door to foreign influence and corruption, which finds a facilitated access to the government itself through channels of party passions. In other words, Washington warned that political parties would lead to divisions and fighting among the people. This, he feared, could lead to foreign influence in the government and other forms of corruption. Despite Washington's warnings, the first two political parties emerged from the debates within his own cabinet and have since become prominent forces in American politics. What she's saying is uh, the Democrats and Republicans have become uh, prominent forces in America, but the Federalist Society is still here just like the Whig Party is still here okay let me tell you what the Federalist Society has done 
the Federalist Society or the Federalist Party they basically have become a shadow of the Republicans you always hear about judges being recommended by the Federalist Society you see the Federalist Party once, once the Federalist Party got destroyed by the Democrat Republican Party they still wanted to hold on to power but they didn't have enough people to win elections so what they basically have become is this uh, shadowy boys and girls club this group <coughs> excuse me they've become this group of people who go around helping Republicans pick judges and they call themselves the Federalist Society let's go on Alexander Hamilton is considered the founder of the Federalist Party and John Adams emerged as another party leader the Federalists favored a strong federal government and a loose construction of the Constitution this means they believed the Constitution should be interpreted broadly the government could do more than just was written in the Constitution they used the necessary and proper clause in Article 1 to defend their reasoning Remember, Hamilton used this argument when he defended the creation of the Bank of the United States. The Federalists supported the growth of businesses, and they advocated for a protective tariff. This protected American industry by making foreign imports more expensive than American-made goods. Finally, they supported alliances with Great Britain, and their policies tended to support the wealthy. Federalists found most of their support in the northern states. Thomas Jefferson, Hamilton's enemy from Washington's cabinet, is considered the founder of the Democratic Republican Party, and James Madison became another early party leader. Unlike Federalists, the Democratic Republicans favored strong state governments over a strong national government. They believed the powers of the federal government should be limited to only what was explicitly stated in the Constitution, which is known as a strict construction of the Constitution. Democratic Republicans believed governing should happen at a more local level, since they could deal with the state's concerns more effectively. Because of this, they supported state banks instead of a national bank. Additionally, Democratic Republicans supported free trade with Europe and wanted an alliance with France after their support in the American Revolution. Their policies tended to support agriculture and the every man. Jefferson believed being a yeoman farmer, also known as a small farmer, was the American ideal. Because of this, most of their support came from the southern states. Now what she skipped over, okay, what she skipped over was the yeoman farmers so there were several things she skipped over. The yeoman farmers came with slaves, some of these people. Okay, they had their house slaves, uh, even though there was a single family farm. Some of these people had one or two slaves, you know, and they treated them like family, but they were still slaves. She's not talking about that. Also, she mentioned something about the Democrat Republicans got a lot of support from the South because they believed in small government where everything should be put up to the states. That's how the robber barons came along. Okay? The robber barons, whenever you have um, individual states doing their own thing, you have an individual banks, that's when you run into a lot of problems because there's no regulation. Without regulation, what happens is when that black person goes into that bank, he either has to be an ass kisser for white people to get a loan. But uh, when you have uh, regulations in place from a, a nationwide bank or a nationwide uh, regulation over banks, what happens is they have to. Uh, give fair treatment to minority. It doesn't happen all the time. It still is messed up out here when it comes to 
minorities getting uh, their fair shake when it comes to loans and debits and debt but it would be even worse if the Democrat, if the Republicans have, if the, if the Democrat Republicans would have kept their way, it would have been worse. I gave an example of this one time. How back in the days, a sheriff, a, 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 a robber baron, to say this guy who he owns the biggest textile mill in the county, and his son drives a Ferrari and runs over your daughter kills in the streets and he's drunk the sheriff comes down there and instead of taking him home I mean taking him to jail he tells his deputy take him home to his daddy this is the type of stuff that goes on when you have localized government when you have localized banks when you have localized uh, stuff like that it sounds good people stick their chest out and say man we need to have our own around here but what happens is, when you have your own around here, the powerful in that area, if you ain't bootlicking the powerful, or if you ain't kin to the powerful, you a slave to them people. That's where in steps a nationwide government to stop that bullshit that's going on. Read between the lines, people. Read between the lines. That localized shit that goes on in some of these communities, it's crazy. And a lot of these people were deeply religious. Let's continue on. Named Andrew Jackson, who really shook things up after he took office. He expanded the power of the executive branch by doing things like destroying the Second National Bank of the United States, sending troops to South Carolina during the nullification crisis, and vetoing nearly every bill that came across his desk. A group of Americans became more and more afraid of Jackson. They labeled him King Andrew and called him a dangerous man on horseback. One of these critics of Jackson was a well-respected senator from Kentucky named Henry Clay. Now, it's well documented about Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson was a Donald Trump on steroids. Andrew Jackson was so dangerous with his bigotry that he would literally, if you looked at him as a slave, he, he might pull his sword out and chop you down. He was a well-known, well-documented bigot. And, like I said, he was a part of the Democrat Republicans. He was a part of the cabal of people who wanted small government. He wanted to have all the states do their own thing. So, once you got all the states doing their own thing, now you got all the counties doing their own thing. So who becomes the power in the county? Okay, it's the guy who owns the biggest uh, car dealership in the county. His kids can spit in your kid's face and get away with it. This is the type of stuff that was going on and this is the main reason why a lot of people want small government because a lot of if you if you stop and realize if you stop and think about it a lot of these people that be preaching that small government keep everything local crap a lot of these people are wealthy they know the power that they can accumulate inside of their area it ain't even got to be a dope it ain't got to be a drug a drug dealer it could be it could be somebody whose father owns the biggest pawn shop in the county. He got all the diamond rings, all the watches, all the Rolexes in there. He got guns stacked up behind the wall. He's been running that pawn shop for 20, 30 years. And as long as everything stays small government, he can have you killed. Let's continue on. He decided Jackson's opponents needed to organize against Jackson, and in 1831, he started planning a new political party. 
Clay and other political opponents of Jackson called themselves Whigs. Named after the term, many patriots referred to themselves during the American Revolution, which showed that they hated King George III. The Patriots actually sold the term from the British Whig political party, which originated because of its anti-King stance. The Whig party started off on a good note until they started inviting all the biggest in because they needed the votes. It all goes back to needing the votes, people. The same thing that Ronald Reagan did. And that's what that's where the Whig Party took a wrong turn. And remember, once the Republicans get destroyed, they're going to do it again. I don't know how I'm going to look further into it. I don't know how the structure is exactly as far as the new generation of the Whig Party down in uh, Florida and, and uh, Atlanta, not Atlanta, but Georgia. I'm going to look it up and do my research on it again. But these people, once the Republican Party uh, lose their leader, a lot of them people going to flee. Once Donald Trump get them handcuffs put on him and thrown in jail for 20, he's not going to get no less than 20. Understand what I'm telling you people. <coughs> Excuse me. Donald Trump is not going to get no less than 20. He's going to die in there because the feds is not like the state. The feds, when you when it comes to espionage, there's a woman in in Hawaii who got caught with one document. She had it in her briefcase and took it home. She got three years. I think she got three years. You know, and that was a oops. You know, I took it out. I I had it in my briefcase. They gave her three years. Donald Trump is not going to get no less than 20. No less than that. And once they see them handcuffs get put on Donald Trump, he's going to wither away. A wealthy man like that is not used to doing time. He's going to melt inside of that, just like John Gotti. John Gotti went from a boisterous, shit-talking mafioso. When they put them handcuffs on him and put him in jail, he withered away. Let's get further into this. Henry Clay ran as a Whig in the 1832 presidential election against Andrew Jackson, but got his butt kicked in the election, only getting 49 electoral votes to Jackson's 219. Jackson and his supporters had done a great job at portraying Clay and the Whigs as a party just devoted to the rich and aristocratic. By the way, Jackson and the Democrats had almost as many rich supporters as the Whigs did, and the Democrat candidate that year, Louis Cass, lost many votes to former president and Free Soil Party candidate Martin Van Buren. Taylor won the election, and things again were looking good for the Whigs. But the Compromise of 1850 deeply split Northern and Southern Whigs over the issue of the expansion of slavery out West. In July 1850, President Taylor died, and his vice, Millard Fillmore, would become the fourth and final Whig president. During his presidency, new issues like dealing with the rising number of immigrants, the problems with alcohol in society, and the growing number of abolitionists, or people against slavery. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go one step further. I think the Whig party has always been lurking. Just like the Federalist uh, Party had turned into the Federalist Society, these people who they go to to pick judges, I think the Whig Party's always been around lurking, but they haven't had a chance to get a foothold in the government. But trust and believe, if the Republican Party gets destroyed, for any of you who have participated in the Whig Party, if you got, if you're a minority and you got any power, in the Whig Party, make sure, make sure that they don't let them uh, bigots come into the party. Let them bigots uh, create their own party. Whig Representative Lewis D. Campbell of Ohio said it best. We are slain. The party is dead. 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 In 1854, the Kansas-Nebraska Act split the Whigs even more. Northern Whigs did not like the law. 
One such man was Abraham Lincoln, who left the Whig Party and joined the brand new Republican Party. Now, I like this guy's history because, like I said, I read about a lot of this stuff. Uh, the one fact that he's keeping out of it is, like he just said, Abraham Lincoln joined the brand new Republican Party. You see, the Democrats and the Republicans used to be one party. They destroyed the Federalist Party, and the Federalist Party basically went into uh, uh, obscurity. They still around. They help pick judges and stuff like that. They they they've become this Federalist society. And then you got the Whig Party, the Democrats and the Republican Party destroyed the Whig Party. But after they destroyed the Whig Party. They knew that sooner or later somebody else was going to try to step up and have their own party. So they basically broke off into two parts. The Republicans, which is what Abraham Lincoln was a part of, and then you had the Democrats. So they basically started a whole two-party system to keep the power within just those two, the Republicans and the Democrats. Let's keep going. And that was it. Or maybe not. Flash forward to 2006, and a group of people in Florida tried to revitalize the Whig Party, but it was short-lived. Now remember, Florida is where who? Ron DeSantis is at. Remember that, people. 2008, a group of Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans formed the modern Whig Party with many of the same principles of the historical Whigs. They've won a couple of local elections since then, and now claim between 25,000 to 30,000 supporters. So maybe I spoke too soon. Although the modern Whig Party does have its differences with the old Whig Party. 2008, a group of Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans formed the modern Whig Party with many of the same principles of the historical Whigs. They've won a couple of local elections since then, and now claim between 25,000 to 30,000 supporters. So maybe I spoke too soon. Although the modern Whig Party does have its differences with the old Whig Party. Now, those differences he's talking about, the modern Whig, now listen carefully, for all of you minorities who might be a part of this Whig Party, this new generation of Whig Party, those minor differences is not really a minor difference. They was destroyed because of their bigotry. And believe me, if the Republican Party was to be dismantled tomorrow, you're going to have oh, thousands of those Republicans running to join the Whig Party. Don't get it twisted. So for any of you blacks who, who or minorities, period, who have joined this new movement because you was trying to get away from the whole Republican-Democrat system, I get it. I got friends right now when they be like, man, you messing with them Democrats, man, they just as worse as the Republicans. I hear it all the time. But at the same time, I always tell them, that's the only party that really represents us as a country. The Republicans don't represent us as a country. They represent wealthy and white and the few wealthy blacks that run with them. That's it. I hope you guys learned something from today. This is the Daily Read, and I'm out. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read.